All right, so we are getting into game number one in the semifinals. Uh, it is worth noting that it's all Zerg from this point out. No more Protoss, no more Terran. Woo. For this reason, we've elected to only do one of the semifinals, folks. For for a couple different points on this. Uh, number one, first off, I'm still sick, and this is not an excuse, but this is a reason. As uh, we got our sub celebration day, which we have to do today, and I really don't want to cast three ZVZs and then um, have this drone on for a really really long amount of time if we can get the sub celebration started sooner than later type thing. So uh, we're gonna do this semifinals. Soul King Sleep. We're gonna go ahead and start on their side, and we'll cast the best of five finals after this. Um, but the sub-celebration thing, some of you may not have remembered, or maybe you're new subs to the channel, or whatever the case may be, just a quick reminder that today, after the Alima League is finished, we're going to take about an hour break-ish, and then when we return, we're going to be doing stuff with subs for the rest of the day. We got a lot of giveaways planned, we got stuff from G2A, gift codes, we got gear from Corsair, straight up headsets, keyboard, mouse, uh, you name it. We got a lot of stuff we're, we're going to be giving away today, because we want to give back to the subscribers to the channel. But also we'll be playing Ooh. games in StarCraft 2, maybe Team Zombie, maybe versus Team Rifkin, maybe just straight up 4v4s. We don't really know. We're going to play it by ear. So uh, the one thing I would like to just kind of advertise and recommend checking out is we do have a Discord server set up now. And Discord is going to be how we choose to talk to you guys while we're playing the games. But also we'll be doing a couple of giveaways through Discord later as well. So it's definitely worth uh, getting set up because you have to sync your Twitch account to it for it to recognize that you're a subscriber. And that can sometimes take a little bit of time. At any rate, we didn't have crazy openings, so that's why we took so long to get into this one. In the bottom right, it's the orange Zerg player, Armani. In the top left, as the red Zerg, he's Departure. Pretty much we're at this point now where we're casting ZVZ. If it's not going to be like a 14 pool, we're not too worried. <laughs> I think it's the safe way to generalize it. But Ooh. Look at these layer timings. Everything has been so on point for both. Uh, spine crawler timings, layer timings. Like, while I've been droning on, if you guys have been watching the production tab, they've actually <laughs> matched so each other. So a bay. You. <laughs> oh, leave those, to the, leave those jokes to Rifkin. You, <laughs> leave the professional. You're too good for those. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <clears throat> no, but uh, seriously, like, not just the fact that they both have identical layer timing, it's just that the layer is so early. I mean, that was a a 250 layer or something like that, and it's gotta be for a spire. So they're both gonna be going spire. They both, no, wait a minute, they both skipped link speed, so never mind. Never mind about the spire. Uh, we do have departure going for Roach Warren, speed two eventually, but Armani, he's not gonna go for Roach Warren, okay. No? I was say, if he doesn't throw that down soon. But Departure changes his mind. Armani still goes for Aspired. I just don't understand ZVZ. It's more to the point that I think Prion really affects this. There's a lot of extra caution you have to play. Gotcha. They both go for Aspire anyway. Wait, wait. So hear me out. Like, I, I think the thing about the Roach War and, and more importantly, the early spine being the first indicator of this is it's Prion. And on this map, more than others, your opponent is not just... It's not that they're more likely... To go for something like a Roach All In or a Ling All In, but it's more that if they do, you have to be more prepared for it. Because you there, there's extra minerals. They're going to have way more than normal. So your regular production wouldn't cut it. You're just going for Lings, hoping to go to Spire, throw it on three spines, you know, that classic move. That doesn't work here I, uh... because there's going to be so many more units. So you have to be ready to make your own Roaches in retaliation. So, the only thing in this game specifically, because I like all those points in general for this map, is that they both skip Ling Speed. And they both knew that, too, because they saw each other's links. So you knew there wouldn't be a lot of aggression, and I guess there could have been, like, a Roach Warren hidden in the back that could have been the uh, choice for aggression. But, yeah, well, regardless, we're out of this point. Um, so it is going to be Spire versus Spire. They're both going to have Ling speed, although Armani's a little bit later. And Departure knows this, so he's going to go for Carapace, and so does Armani. So Carapace first for both. By the way, just as a quick aside, while we have Mutas starting up, uh, Mutas do seem to be the ultimate, like the penultimate ZVZ thing right now. Like if you can get to Mutas, you can win with Mutas, you're going to keep winning with Mutas. But it is worth noting that there's been some very entertaining, and I don't mean like one or two games, but like a significant amount of the ZVZs we've been casting lately. have been in these really kind of cool Ravager Wars, uh, which are honestly probably the most boring of all. But uh, on top of that, we've had Ultra versus Ultra. We've seen Hive Tech involved. I mean, Mutas, again, are the focal point because they can win you the game the hardest. But there's been some really cool 
Really cool ZVZs we've seen recently, too. Thank mm-hmm. you to David Kreish for the new Woo! sub. And Daily Cat for the 19 month sub as well. Damn. Oh, I thought it was Daily Cat. It'd be like. One cat a Daily day. Daily Cat. That sounds amazing. <laughs> anyway. Um. Yeah, so Muta versus Muta War. They both got their bases pretty much uh, on time here with each other. But Armani is down in drones. So that's not going to affect his gas count so much. He still obviously has all of his gases saturated. It's more that minerals are still important. You know, they cost 100, 100. But also lings on the ground are important. Like, you still want to have a good number of lings for counterattacks, to deal with your opponent's lings, uh, to be on the on the ground where you have Muta's fights, and maybe to turn into one or two Bane lings, but not in this game because they both... Go for a Bane Lane Nest. Well, the Mutalist counts are holding pretty close for the time being. Uh, Carapace, big influential. Uh, I'm not gonna get you guys. This is stupid. I hate Mutalist Muta, even though it's like the one thing Ooh! to go to. Like, <laughs> it's beautiful. I love Mutalist <laughs> Muta. I don't know how. Like, like I'm the guy who loves all the disgusting parts of StarCraft, Mac, Cheese, you name it. But like Muta versus Muta, I just I despise it because. I don't know. I just I feel like it's it's one of the uh, it's not, it has nothing to do with skill or anything too. It's just like you can't really tell what's going to go on in the fight until it's already like well underway. I think uh, well we'll get into more theoretical discussion later as we do have an attack here from departure who by the way had more lings, more army in general. Killed twenty he... drones already for the start, so this is already going amazing. Uh, gonna lose yeah. a couple of mutas on the run by for this, and this actually is not good because for Armani's sake. All it's going to take is those two extra mutas to snowball and win the game. Mm, potentially. No, potentially, because you can have links on the ground and you can take a, a better fight over like, a queen or maybe a sport crawl. He's trying to go back home. So there we go. Actually, he's going to get because... here quicker. There's no links on the ground. No, but it, go. It, it wasn't going to work because, okay, he's down one or two mutas, sure, but there's a lot of Glaiborn bounce shots that went off across the map while he's chasing. So a lot of these mutas were already like three quarters health before the fighting began. This isn't going so terribly, but Armani is winning the Muta fight. Yes, he is. The Lings, you know, they could have held that they were on the ground, but they took care of the Lings here. They're running around everywhere. Uh, Armani wouldn't actually have that many reinforcements, so Departure, as long as he had any amount of Mutas left over, was not going to tab out of this game. He's down by four right now. Uh, this is where the Lings are going to try and counterattack and bring Armani's Mutas back. Armani is basically all in here, you know, he's on 32 drones. Is she going to take the fight again? Um... And I don't know, uh, Armani does have a couple of mutas going across the field, but he still has more here. Oh, there's Ling's, fire. Ling's running nuts on the other side of the field. Like, he might actually win the muta war, but funny enough, it might be... Actually, it was probably not. Yeah, it uh, he mean. lost so much at home, though. Those Ling rabbis are fantastic. GG, departure, game one. Woohoo! I want to go back on this daily cat thing, though. If Why? you can choose and have a life, that was either your current life, right? Where you've got you, I'm talking you specifically, because you have five cats. You're crazy. You have five cats, right? And it is what it is. You've got Apollo. You love him. But what if, what if you could choose to have like a more, uh, what's that game? Um, Neko Atsumi style life where you had more cats and more variety, but you couldn't always guarantee which ones you would have on any given day. So for example, some days you wouldn't have to deal with baby anymore. You wouldn't have to deal with the annoying meowing or giving shots to the cats. Because instead it's like other cats, six, seven, or eight, right? But it also means sometimes you can't always have Apollo, which is your favorite one. That's true. Uh, I would prefer to have my five cats. I wouldn't take the other option. Okay. But uh, I, I maybe when I'm like old, I'll, I'll start like a cat farm. There's this lady oh, in God. Korea. It's our... Oh, it's- <laughs> There's this lady in Korea, right? And uh, like, this dog is still like a um, like a delicacy or whatever. Like, it's pretty rare, but they're still used uh, sometimes for their meat. So she actually finds the restaurants uh, and the providers and saves dogs. So she has like hundreds of dogs on her property, and she just takes care of him, and that's her her life. And I'm like, that sounds like a pretty good life. Like, if I if I made this age alive. Already nailing it. <laughs> Secondly, well, yeah. all the animals like true. icing on the cake. Yeah, I would. Do, I would totally save like cats. You know, like dozens of cats at a time. Yep. Oh, we got dust towers set up for the second lobby. Ugh, so we skip the intro and just hop right into it as soon as I don't ready think to go. she let the other series go. 
Uh, okay, we're gonna get this one. <clears throat> I'll talk to her. Okay. Alright, uh, intro. I'll see you guys here in a sec. Alright, well, we're getting into the game. It's map two. Let me swap this around. He's currently down one. Currently, he's spawning the top right side of the map. It's gonna be the orange Zerg player, Armani. Okay, in the bottom left as the red Zerg, he is departure. So yeah, now we're a little unclear on what's going on with the other semifinals because uh, Olivia, who we thought was listening to our whispers and us talking about it on stream, <laughs> chose nope. to neglect us. Admin. God, let's fire. Okay, first step, fire Rifkin from Bay Straight TV. Second step, fire Olivia from the Alima League. Neither of these people know what they're doing. <laughs> Zombie grab and fear dragon take control. Yeah, that's not going to last long. <laughs> Excuse you. It'd uh, be great. So, um, at any rate, whether we're casting a bunch of ZVZs or slightly less or slightly more ZVZs, the point of it is, uh, I do think a lot of these are going to look a bit different. And while I might have my personal gripes with Muta versus Muta, what is going to be kind of interesting to see is the variety in play that we do get today. Because Muta versus Muta, or Muta in general, I think is very... Again, recognize as something that can snowball, but still not stylistically appealing because of how hard it is to get to. We've seen just as many games get out of control and look silly with Muta vs. Muta as we have had just die before they could even get to that point. You know, the Roach Ravager all in hits too soon. 14-14 pools get you too far ahead in the early game. Uh, this, that, and the other. Yeah. It's, it's pretty difficult to have a game that looks especially like that one. You know, regardless if there is, you know, just a... Any roaches first or any pressure first, that was just a really quick snowball into mutas, which usually is not allowed to happen. Um, I mean, the fact that they both skip speed and they both skip the bailing nest is just, it's so uncommon. Oh, and here we have them both going for speed, and at least a project going for a nest. I think Armani should be going for one too. So I don't really blame Armani for getting, you know, he was low on drones, that was his first mistake. And then, of course, having, uh, you know, the Lings flood in with a little bit of mistake, too, afterwards. But that was just an odd game, you know? It's not one that usually happens. And Dusk Towers should lead into a more normal-looking game. So maybe a little bit of aggression with a Ling Bling by either one, like, just a tiny bit. And then probably a Roach Warren. And then maybe a Spire after that. But you gotta get to that third, third base first. A big part of it really is what the preference is, though. Because... Mm -hmm. I feel like, well, Muta, it's really hard for the argument to be made, like, Muta's ever going to be bad on a particular map, right? Like, we don't have the merry-go-rounds anymore in the map pool, and you could definitely make the argument Muta's could be good on, on Dust Towers. Again, it's one of those situations where it's not the longest rush distance, although it is fairly notable from base to base. Um, well, let's say Armani, like, says, you know what, I was going to go Muta's, but then I realized Departure's also probably going to go Muta's, so boom, Roaches, all in. Crazy attack. Can't hold it off, game over. Like, there, there's... A lot this is going to have to do with scouting, and we've seen quite a few games, notably with a laser, more than others, where like that last second Ling scout, or that dying breath of said Zergling, gets the information they need to know the trigger. Okay, it's safe to actually do like a big all-in, rather than just try and play macro and match my opponent. Mm. Excuse me. <clears throat> the uh, lair here coming down for departure, it feels like it's going to be a spire for him. Now, that's where the scout is going to be really important. Yeah. As you were talking about. Um, gets in here, scouts the timing. He that's perfect. He's four gases as well. This link got all the information it needed to. But he's, I mean. Which I think he got the fourth uh, one. Oh, he didn't scout the fourth gas, but he did see. Th no, he saw two of the gases, actually. Wow. Well, he saw a lack of a roach warren, um, so that. That could be enough of a tell. Unfortunately, like this is going to be um, not the ideal timing for Ar Armani, as he didn't already have a roach horn and you know isn't already making roaches. So he'll have to hit with something a little bit stronger, or just concede to like letting the spire thing happen. But a little bit stronger, being plus one and and roach speed. Uh, but there's the spire. Starts for departure. Armani, unless he makes roaches right now, though, I don't think he's gonna be able to stop it. No, I agree. And if he's going to play this turtle style, lead into like infestors or something, I don't like that. Uh, I mean, there's if he was making more queens right now, you would also see that as a possible viable way to deal with air. We've seen massive amounts of queens actually do quite well against low amounts of mutas, but there's no continued queen production. He's still just droning. I don't 
I don't like what Armani's doing because I'm wondering if he actually uh, if he's fully aware of what the situation is at hand, you know? I, I, I think so with the infestation pit. I was a little bit worrying, yeah. Um, just getting these roaches like he was. But the infestation pit is not something you get this early unless you do believe it's going to be mutas and you're going to try and get infestors. Unfortunately, infestors were never the end all be all, anyways, whether it was in Wings of Liberty, Heart of the Swarm, or Legacy the Void. Um, they just, you know, they, they're very powerful and they'll hopefully keep your three, maybe four bases alive, but. Uh, they are only one unit with like, usually only one good good, uh, good fungal. And it's got to be the best one to actually do damage. This is just, you know... Going for Hydras first also has its own problems, of course. Because you can't get that many Hydras initially. And Mutas are actually better than Hydras. Yeah, they pick the, uh, them off as they come out one at a time. Same with the Phoenix. Like, yeah. Grab them with the, with the beams. Yeah, exactly. So this is why you usually see infestors first. But e like either way, it's not a very comfortable situation. Like you're going to be contained in your base. You're not going to know what your opponent's doing unless you happen to sneak a ling out. That's that's usually very rare. So you don't know if they're going for banelings afterwards, or maybe they're going up to a, straight to a hive and they're going for ultralisk, or if they're transferring out. Like departure is back into roaches as he gets the uh, one one for missile. Well, that's the last spore crawlers coming down, which is not a bad idea. The hydras then follow up. I I think Queens would have been perfectly fine. I don't think needing to go to Hydra this was the answer, but either way We're gonna have those fungal growths out shortly. Which will be Eventually nice. you gotta go to Hydra's. Um especially if you don't know if they're going for the mass muta style, which he again doesn't really have he doesn't have knowledge about. All he sees is Lings, which uh he might see the Roach Warren here with these Lings. Hey, Gaga. Hey, Gaga. He should. It's all in the natural. Yep. All right. So now he knows what next army he should be anticipating, and maybe yeah, now he would really be like, "Hey, I wish I didn't get these many hydras because I do need a roach army to actually protect this infester hydra queen army." You know, if he if he did make a lurker then like right now, the hydras could easily turn into that. But he's uh, continuing to finish muskier augments. I think I think canceling this lurker den and getting this afterwards may have been a better choice because you're not going to be stepping off a creep with those hydras anytime soon and who needs the range benefit if you've got the fungal growth to hold the hold everything in place mm -hmm. yeah roach count finally starting to come out basically just at all this is a little awkward uh for armani as he does need that buffer the partridge is also going for his uh same uh composition roach hydra Probably Lurker eventually. The Mutas are never going to be useless. They can always pick off Overlords. They'll always have the map control. And they can actually add a lot of damage. You know, snipe off Infestors. Or come into the last second and kill the remaining Hydralisk. Something like that. So you don't want to just give them away. But they are kind of the... Uh, they're the past, you know. They're, they're over and, and done with. Their time to shine is kind of gone. <laughs> and Gas Guys are just bad either. No. Uh, thank you to El Borracho for the 14 month resub. Mmm, El Burrito. Sounds delicious. This why, this is why we have the Ace Food Emote, man. For, <laughs> yeah. for every time, every time. Uh, now, the meat is... Oh, can you get the fungal? Let's couple them. Not a lot of follow-up to this, but still killing five meters won't be too bad. Uh, ideally, you want to do this without burning all the, you know, purely fungals. Yeah. You know, sometimes I wonder why Zerg players even bother transferring out of mutas. You know, we see players like uh, Penguin win really stupid games because he just sticks on. Oh, jeez. That was a cool bailing hit. <laughs> he just sticks on on mutas the entire game. Transferring over into Roaches actually, I feel, gives a lot of um, peace of mind to Armani, who no longer has to deal with like forty mutas constantly attacking his natural and main base. But oh well, it's just so that's it's just pondering. Thirty-five Roaches over. 20 something. There's Ravagers and Spine Claws, of course, so it's not just Roaches versus Roaches here. It's not just a typical numbers game, but it is a significant Roach lead here for Armani. Difference being, without any Ravagers at all, he doesn't have any Corrosive Biles, which means that 60 damage a shot immediately removed from the army. Now, Fungal Growths are cool, but they're a very low amount of damage, and it's damage over time, no less. 30 damage, in fact. Yeah. Uh, Armani is getting the same, uh, similar time to Laker Den as Departure here. The upgrades are pretty even with 1-1 one, one versus just 2-0. I guess all oh, the mutas finally died. Yeah, they guess fighting over the Sporkrow and the Queens like that. 
Yeah. Uh, his own Ravager is finally going to come into play. You know, Corrosive Bile plus Fungal Gross is a very deadly combo. If he keeps the energy high enough on the Infestors, landing one or two of these and then Corrosive Biling right after is going to be his best bet. But, of course, he's got to dodge his opponents at the same time. Mito Man. Mito Man in. My Auto Man in. Oh, I can't say that name. But thank you so much for resubbing. Yay! For 10 months, I've not been Woo. able to pronounce your name. Nailing it. It's like, I feel... You like you know it's 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 a classic situation. Guy goes out with a girl, didn't really learn her name on the first date, one night stand thing. Too what? too awkward to ask again. So you're like, okay, I'll take her to Starbucks, and she'll put her <laughs> name on the cup. But they spell it wrong, so you still don't know the name afterwards. Like that's what I feel the interaction with a lot of our subs is. <laughs> you're all our one night stand. Yeah, well, ten ten months ten months running one night at a time. <laughs> um. Yeah, I was gonna. I was totally gonna back you up on that. Like, you know, sometimes I'll meet people and I'll never catch their names, and I'll meet them again at like another event. Just totally happened. But I don't know about a one night stand. I feel like I'd really try and remember their name. <laughs> well, then you're too needy. Yeah, apparently. Uh, well, why don't you know, write Burrow. on a love phone where you're at it? Sonnet. You can <laughs> just start pulling out your your loot. We all know how needy and emotional I can be. It's true. Yep. All right, uh, so the Ravagers and, of course, the Fungal Growths are not getting to pair up, I think, the way Armani wanted them to. And Departure set up a wonderful defense. And for someone who opened Mutas, transferred out of them, uh, for someone who was taking damage from Mutas but, you know, didn't bleed out to them, I got to say, they're both in a surprisingly equal spot this late in the game. And this is where, this where CVZ for maybe gets really interesting because Armani's the one taking the next step to get to Hive Tech. Ultras are not the game-ending units that they are in ZVT, but they are still dangerous. And, oh, no, oh, forget that for a moment. These infestors almost walk into the lurkers, almost go down immediately. Corrosive Bile's raining down on both sides of the battlefield, but funny enough, the player that's not fungal is the one eating all the Corrosive Biles, not the <laughs> player who's stuck in place. Yeah. It takes so many fungal growths to actually kill a lurker, and that's what he's trying to do with the lurkers. One of them is finally going to... Nope, not even to that fungal. Well, the other one was on. to the uh, Corrosive Bile. Yeah, 41 workers have been killed. These roaches are winning the game for Departure. Yeah, Departure, I think, is just straight up one at this point. The uh, behind-the-scenes tactics were really cool. Armani going for Hive Tech, going for his own Spire. Like he's, he's trying to come back to this in a lot of different ways. It's just not working out for him. Now, we catch these Lurkers, and that's going to have a nice surprise, but so much focus on the army is going to cost them the game through economy. Like, 37 workers, funny enough, isn't too bad for the one and a half bases he has to mine with, but it's the <laughs> fact that Departure is continuing to expand. He's going to continue to just have this bank. He came into this fight with, like, twice the bank of his opponent in the first place. Yeah. Uh, fungal growths are great. They're certainly helping here. Concave going down. Hydra's got some damage to them, but again, Departure's got more money and more supply where that came from. Yeah, the army supply is actually pretty even here, but you know the Hydra's being picked off. The Fungal's actually just going to be... They're going to be out of energy. That is, of course, taking away from that army supply. And Departure, I feel like he should be a little bit scared. Oh. He has a right to be a little bit scared here, but he shouldn't ultimately lose the game. So nice, nice deny here with this lurker. I kind of forgot there was like a butt ton of spine crawlers put down here too. So pushing into this base wouldn't even be that easy. Uh, of course, defending this new base is very, very important. Yeah, yeah. It looks like departure did not see the army move, uh, move over here. So that's going to be potentially a lot of drones killed. But I'm not sure Armani can take the fights here. He's going to be attacked from both sides. His fungals trying to save his infestors. Uh, Rab's getting some good shots. Yeah, Ravage don't often get those gross of that land like that, but a lot of the roaches go down immediately. Departure is going to concave, clean this up, and Armani doesn't have a bank to remake this with. And with that Departure, while he hasn't caused his opponent to GG right here, I'm pretty sure he just won the game. Yeah, I think so. And that will be a 2-0 uh, for him. I, oh. I honestly didn't know this was going to go. I didn't realize that Armani had lost his lurker down when this one on, too, so he's trying to build a new one. Yeah, and I just know it's in the main base, but yeah, well, oh, that's an awkward looker. Um, <laughs> when Armani and Departure are certainly the guys you see in like the round of eights. They're rarely both in the round of four, so I have no idea how this is going to go. But Departure definitely looks a lot stronger in ZDZ, or maybe just plays a style Armani does not appreciate. Everyone's telling me I don't know what a one night stand is in chat. That's, yo, I've got, I don't have two, I've only got one by my bed, and it keeps my glasses and stuff behind me. Like. <laughs> <laughs> well, it looks like we're casting another ZVZ because sleep was away. Oh, no, they're in game. Cool. Good. Well, we got to wait, so either way. Yeah, we'll grab game two or game three or something, depending on how that plays out. Uh, 
But all right, so small break coming up here on the channel. When we get back, if we're stuck waiting, we'll talk a little bit about our sub day and some other stuff. But thank you guys for watching. Have a good one. We'll see you in two minutes.